And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs, a time when a special man came forward a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear. A man whom they took prisoner and hid away. A man whose name is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become, a story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years. A story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, you hey wav hey. Olam shall you hey wav hey. The universe of you hey wav hey. Brought to you by the nation of you working for you and your future. Good or evil, life or death, this is your choice in this, the year 6002, the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. My name is Josiah Israel and I am your host. For over seven years now, we have been discussing some of the things the Bible said would occur in the Day of Judgment. We warned you that the weather was going to change and that the powerful forces of nature were going to bring terrible destruction upon America and the world and that it was going to get worse and worse and worse. And it has. We alerted you that violence in the public schools was going to increase, and it has. We showed you in the scriptures that forewarned of wickedness in high places, and we are witnessing today gross misconduct and serious crimes being committed by some of our highest elected officials. What lies ahead for America and the world is nothing less than the proliferation of deadly diseases and plagues as foretold in the Bible. But there is hope. The Bible tells us that at the end, the Messiah would be revealed. And at that time, he would save the righteous from this impending destruction. That one, the Messiah, is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. So we invite you to join us in the universe of Yahweh, featuring the commandments of Yahweh and the Messiah revealed. First, the commandments of Yahweh. For 6,000 years, we have been suffering at the hands of rulers who transgress the laws of yud heh -Wav -Heh and teach all people throughout the earth to transgress the laws of yud heh -Wav -Heh. In order to have peace, love, and harmony upon the earth, we must return to keeping the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of yud heh -Wav -Heh. All of us have been taught that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do not count today. In this series, we will show you that the commandments, judgments, laws and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do count and that if we govern our lives according to these commandments, judgments, laws and statutes of God yud heh wav -Heh, then we will have peace and goodwill upon the earth forever. 
We invite you to study along with us. However, in order to do so, you must have the following tools. A King James Version of the Bible, several dictionaries, the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, a set of encyclopedias, Hebrew and Greek lexicons, a thesaurus, and a synonym finder. Shalom. My name is Ben Kayo Bethel Yishraya. We are discussing the first two commandments that Yahweh gave to man. Many people have been led to believe that the first commandments ever given to man were given to Moses. The first two commandments were given to Adam, which were to dress and to keep the Garden of Eden. To keep the Garden of Eden is what we have been discussing for quite some time now. One of the definitions of the word keep is watch. Let us go back and recapitulate some of our main points of view. Yahweh put Adam in the Garden of Eden to keep it. However, Adam disobeyed Yahweh and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because he did this, Yahweh sent Adam forth from the Garden of Eden. From diligent research of this word, watch, we learn that although Adam was sent forth from the Garden of Eden, the way he would be able to keep it would be through his progenitors, his descendants. We also learned that Yahweh commanded Adam to teach his descendants to keep an eye out for the future birth of a child to be born from among his, Adam's, descendants, who would make it possible for his seed to return or be restored to the Garden of Eden. We told you that this child is to be given the same charge as Adam, which is to protect life and property and to preserve the peace in the Garden of Eden. The office or duty of this child is that the establishment of the government of Yahweh shall be upon his shoulder, which means that it shall be upon this child to administer the affairs of the administrative division of or during the spiritual reign of Yahweh on the earth. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Matthew chapter 2 verse 6 identified us as thou Bethlehem. We told you that Bethlehem and Bethlehem Judah are substitute words which describe a nation of people belonging to the tribe of Judah. We read in Genesis chapter 3 verses 17 and 19 that in the sweat of the tribe of Judah's face they shall eat bread until they return to the Garden of Eden, the promised land. Realizing that every man has to eat bread, we pose the question, how can we distinguish Adam's family from any other family who eats bread? The answer to this question is our pivotal point of discussion today. How can we distinguish Adam's family from any other family who, from the sweat of their face, eats bread? This is a very profound question. Why? Because the answer clearly reveals the true family of Adam, the tribe of Judah, from any other family on earth. You might ask, why is knowing Adam's true family significant? It is significant because it is through Adam's descendants or family that a child is born who is preordained to be governor over the government of Yahweh and who shall also rule the children of Israel today. It is even more significant 
because it is through this child's obedience to Yahweh that the descendants of Adam will be able to return and to keep the Garden of Eden, the promised land. Now, let us get into the specifics of what sets Adam's family apart from any other family who eats bread. We will begin by opening our Bibles to Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, and it reads in part, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou, Adam, eat bread. Let us get an understanding of what this means. Documented in the American Heritage Student Dictionary, copyright 1998, on page 502, the word in is a preposition, and it means within the time of. It also means after. The is an adjective. On page 974, the is described as a definite article, and it is used before nouns or noun phrases that refer to specified persons or things. Stated in the Benziger Dictionary, copyright 1982, on page 470, phrase is defined as a group of words expressing a single thought. A phrase is not a complete sentence. Therefore, in the phrase, in the sweat, we can deduce from the words in and the that a single thought is being expressed about a specified thing that would happen within the time period of and even continue after a certain period of time to the tribe of Judah. Question. In relationship to the tribe of Judah, Adam's descendants, what is this single thought which is being expressed about a specified thing to occur within the time of or even after a certain time period? To answer this question, we must examine the noun which the adjective the describes. This specified thing is the noun sweat. The word sweat clearly distinguishes Adam's family from any other family who eats bread. Let us prove our point. What does sweat mean? According to the Random House Dictionary of the English Language, unabridged, copyright 1967, on page 1,436, sweat means to suffer punishment, to force pressure on a person, to work hard, to employ workers at low wages for long hours. We can gather from these facts that the single thought which is being expressed in the phrase, in the sweat, is that within the time period of, and even after a certain time, the seed of Adam, more specifically, the tribe of Judah, would suffer punishment, and pressure would be forced upon Judah to work hard at low wages for long hours. There are some important points here that separate Adam's family from all the other families and they are suffer punishment and forced pressure. Now, let us give you some additional facts about the word sweat to further establish that which separates Adam's family from any other family who eats bread. On the authority of the synonym finder by J.I. Rodell, copyright 1978, on page 1,203, sweat is also equivalent to slave. On page 1,120, slave means the same as to hold in bondage. 
referenced in the Cassell Concise Dictionary, copyright 1998, on page 1386, slave also means a person who is the property of and bound in obedience to another. In accordance with Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary, copyright 1961, on page 677, property typifies that to which a person has a legal title. On page 892, title means a descriptive name. And on page 100, bound means destined. Taking all of these facts into consideration, in the sweat tells us that at some point in history, the family of Adam, more specifically the tribe of Judah, would be held in bondage as slaves and would be the property of and bound in obedience to another people. As bondmen and bondwomen, Judah would be compelled to also carry the legal descriptive names of another people, like Mr. Jackson, Mr. Jordan, and Mr. King, who would decide the destiny of Judah and to whom Judah would be made to obey as it is this day. This is affirmed in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 28, and it reads, and Yahweh rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. This day means as I speak. These are the specified things that are occurring this day which clearly set Adam's family apart from any other family who eats bread. Genesis chapter 3 verse 19, in the sweat, sheds light on the fact that this treatment will continue until the family of Adam, Judah, is returned or restored to the Garden of Eden, the promised land. Next week, we will maintain our course of singling out the family of Adam from any other family who feeds on or eats bread. We will show you where the tribe of Judah is today, outside the Garden of Eden, as we continue to discuss the word watch and its relationship to keep. I bear witness to you today that the Messiah Yahweh ben Yahweh is here. I bear witness to you today that the Mahdi is here. I bear witness to you today that Shiloh is here. I bear witness to you today that the great light is here. I bear witness to you today that the Grand Master of the Celestial Lodge, Architect of the Universe, is here. I bear witness to you today that the enlightened one is here. I bear witness, witness to you today that the one all religions have been speaking of for over 6,000 years is here. Thank you for listening and join us next week as we continue our discussion of the commandments of Yahweh. What is the Tetragrammaton? What are the laws and teachings of Yahweh ben Yahweh? What is the meaning of the crucifixion? What are the laws of the covenant? How can you work to balance justice? How can you hear the voice of Yahweh? Learn the answers to these questions 
and many more on the internet when you visit the new Yahweh Ben Yahweh website. The address is www.yahwehbenyahweh.com. Who is worthy? Who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. At the end of time of evil rule, the Anointed One, the Messiah, shall appear. In 1979, Yahweh Ben Yahweh came to Miami and became the spiritual leader and founder of the nation of Yahweh. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years he guided the nation to amass a $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation of Yahweh has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is bringing about changes in the lives of individuals and is giving the world the keys to success in life politically, economically, educationally, socially, and spiritually. Behold, any nation and kingdom that will not serve Yahweh Ben Yahweh shall perish. Yes, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 12. This means that Yahweh ben Yahweh shall put down or put an end to all rule and all authority and power. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 24. This is the day that Yahweh ben Yahweh will be given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Daniel chapter 7 verse 14. Moreover, the kingdom and dominion, and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven, shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, Yahweh, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Daniel chapter 7, verse 27. And Yahweh ben Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Yahweh, and his name one, as written, in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 9. And he, Yahweh ben Yahweh, shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end, according to Luke chapter 1, verse 33. Revelations chapter 11, verse 15 tells us that there were great voices heard in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of Yahweh and of his Christ, Yahweh ben Yahweh, and he shall reign forever and ever. And even more, a voice came out of the throne of Yahweh, saying, Praise our God, Yahweh, all you his servants, and you that fear him, both small and great. And it was heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters. 
and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for Yahweh God omnipotent reigns. Revelations chapter 19, verses 5 and 6. Remember that this is the morning of the third day, and I shall rise again. I am the resurrection. It, all of prophecy tells you that I shall rise again. It's all about that. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. No doubt about it. Again, I love you forever. Bless you forever. I remind you once again, my associates are children of the light. <laughs> That just brings uh, laughter to my heart, to my soul, to realize that at last, I have those of you that love peace. And I only want to be in the presence of those of you that love peace. I love you forever. Shalom Aleikum. The Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is setting up his kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. His dominion shall encompass all nations and all languages, for all power and authority have been given unto him in heaven and in earth. Know of a surety that any nation that will not serve Yahweh ben Yahweh shall perish and shall be utterly wasted. Thank you for joining us in the universe of Yahweh. And now, we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the east with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabbat Shemayim, Yikar Deshemeyaka, Tavo Malkuteaka, Yase Razonka, Kiva Shemayim Kain Baaretz, Et Lekum Kukainu, Tain La Nu Hayom, Uslak La Nu. Ah kati enu, he moshe sol kim, gamanak nu, la kote om la nu, ve al tefi enu, le de nisayom, kim kal se nu, min hara, kila ka, hamam la ha, ve ha givara, ve ha ti ferret, le olame, olamin sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal king, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us, sila. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father Yahweh and His Son Yahweh Ben Yahweh love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleichem! To order the companion book to the series, The Messiah Revealed, call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337. And when you call Ask about the special discount on the persecution of Yahweh ben Yahweh, Volume 1. Videos of this program are available. When ordering, please refer to the program number on the screen. You can now access the divine mind of Yahweh ben Yahweh on the internet at the address on the screen. <laughs>